Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Game Club. I'm Graham. And I'm George. Whether you're brand new to Hoyoverse and their games, or you're a Genshin veteran, this guide will help you understand what the Ascension materials are and what they're used for. This way you're primed and ready to go for the full release and you can better focus on what you need the most. As most players will be somewhat familiar with Genshin Impact, we'll be using Genshin as a reference point so we can more easily showcase what's changed and what's the same in Honkai Star Rail. All the information we've compiled comes from the final closed beta. All signs point to the game being close to release, so it's unlikely things significantly change, but in the event that they do, we'll release an updated guide with any new information. Alright, let's get started. There's no better place to start than with Character Ascension. You level up your characters using these XP materials. Look a little familiar? At these specific level thresholds, each character must be ascended in order to increase their level further. Interestingly enough, the max level for characters and weapons in Star Rail is actually 80 as opposed to 90 in Genshin. How much you can ascend your character is dependent on your adventure rank, that is, your trailblaze level, and your world level, or equilibrium as it's called in game. We'll cover the details of these systems in an upcoming video. So for example, to ascend a character in Genshin you need ascension gems, drops from bosses found throughout the open world, monster drops, local specialties found from different regions of the game, and of course, the basic currency, Mora as they call it. And so we're happy to say in Star Rail that things have been streamlined quite a bit. First off, there are no more Ascension Gems at all. That's right, you heard it. No more Ascension Gems. They are gone, and there's nothing to replace them. Second, there are no more local specialties. Gone are the days of running around in the open world farming for different flowers or rocks just so you could ascend your characters. For one, Star Rail doesn't have an open world only overworld zones, and two, the functionality that local specialties and monster drops had in Genshin have been rolled into just monster drops. You'll also be in need of boss drops. For those familiar with Genshin, think of the stuff you'd get from the Regis Vines or the Hypostasis Cubes. In Star Rail, you can teleport to various bosses in the overworld and fight them for their specific drops. In fact, speaking of teleporting, you can teleport to all the activities as long as you've been there once. And lastly, you'll need basic currency, or credits as it's called in game. In Genshin, if you wanted to grind Mora or XP materials, you'd hit up the Ley Lines. Well, in Star Rail, there's the Golden Calyx, which is a grindable activity you can repeat up to six times in a single run. So in short, for character ascensions, all you need is credits, monster drops, and overworld boss drops. That's it. It's clear Hoyoverse is taking a good look at how they did things with Genshin and iterating on the systems they had in place. Alright, let's move on to the character talents. At least, that's what they're called in Genshin. The Star Rail equivalent is called Traces. This time, it's a skill upgrade treat where you can enhance your character's skills, as you would expect, provide them with stat bonuses, and unlock extra passive abilities. Much like Genshin, how much you can upgrade your Traces is dependent on your character's ascension level. To upgrade your talents, you'll need trace materials dropped by the Crimson Calyx. In Genshin, there are various talent books which you can farm from different domains. In Star Rail, we instead have the Crimson Calyx to fulfill the domain's role. Much like the Golden Calyx we mentioned earlier, the Crimson Calyx is a grindable activity, which you can repeat multiple times. One clear costs 10 Trailblaze Power, which is Star Rail's stamina currency, like Resin in Genshin. Before starting each run, you can opt to do it just once for 10, or up to 6 times for 60 Trailblaze Power. And since we're on the topic of grinding, we should note that you can have a maximum of 180 Trailblaze Power. It recharges at a rate of 1 per 6 minutes, or 10 per hour, so basically in 18 hours, you'll be fully capped off if you started from zero. So it's helpful to keep all of this in mind to plan out exactly what you want to grind. And let's be honest, only real gacha gamers are ever going to see that 180 once. Hashtag no cap gang. So basically, um, what I was thinking of was, um, oh, f I can't believe you've done this. In the beta, each Calyx type called Buds in game corresponds to each of the different character paths. Covered in a different video, like, comment, subscribe. And it was open daily. We suspect this is probably the case so as to not stifle players over the short beta period. 
But if we had to take a wild guess, we could speculate that the schedule might, I don't know, go something like this. Yeah, like I'm feeling Monday and Thursday could be an erudition and harmony mm. kind of day. Oh yeah, okay, that sounds pretty good. Um, so maybe, huh, maybe like Tuesday, Friday could be hunt and nihility. That that sounds like okay. pretty solid. I like where you're going with this, and and just hear me out. But sure. Wednesday and Saturday, they sound like perfect uh -huh. destruction, preservation, and abundance days. Uh. I, I, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm loving where your head's at. In fact, you know what? Sunday, we should just make them all available. It seems pretty generous, Ooh, right? Like, not a bad idea. That's good. I like that. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, this is total speculation. We couldn't oh, truly course. know. Of but, course. Um, I mean, it sounds pretty plausible, right? It sounds pretty yeah, good. Yeah, sounds good. That said, in addition to the trace materials obtained from the Crimson Calyx, you'll also need the advanced trace materials found in the Echo of War. For the Genshin veterans, this is like the weekly boss drops from Storm Terror or Child, etc. However, there's a pretty key difference with how Star Rail and Genshin handle their weekly bosses. In Genshin, you can fight all the bosses, but only once a week. In Star Rail, you can fight the bosses multiple times, but you have a limit of three weekly clears. The changes don't just stop there though. In Star Rail, there's only one drop that is unique to each boss. So it's not like Genshin where each boss had three different drops and there's RNG as to which one you'll get. Personally, I like the system much better as you're more accurately able to target drops for your specific needs. One thing to note is that each Echo of War boss fight costs 30 Trailblaze power per clear for a total of 90 for all three clears. And the last item you'll need to ascend your traces to their final levels are the Tracks of Destiny. These are like the crowns in Genshin Impact. In my opinion though, this system has also been improved in Star Rail because the Tracks of Destiny aren't acquired only through events. You're able to craft them using the drops from the weekly bosses, that is, the Echo of War we just talked about, at a 5 to 1 ratio. In summary, for ascending your traces you need the Tracks of Destiny, the Echo of War weekly boss drops, monster drops, and the trace materials obtained from the Crimson Calyx. Last but certainly not least is the ascension of weapons. In-game, weapons are called Light Cones. Light Cones are essentially cards that always provide stats and can provide passives if the path of the Light Cone and the character match. These cards are not reflected visually in-game like you would expect a weapon to, but this way you can always see the character holding their signature weapon. As you'd expect, they can be leveled up using specific Light Cone EXP materials called Aether or with other Light Cones. Once you hit these specific thresholds, you have to ascend the Light Cone if you want it to go any further. To ascend a Light Cone, you'll use drops you get from a Crimson Calyx as well as monster drops. The key difference though between Genshin and Star Rail is that in Genshin, you need drops from two different monsters in order to ascend your weapon. But in Star Rail, you only need drops from a single monster. Aside from the various different sources for the materials we've already discussed, there's one more we need to touch on. That is, the material exchange. This is like the crafting table in Genshin, except that, as is the pattern with Star Rail, things are more straightforward here too. Instead of going to specific crafting tables, you can access a crafting menu, called Synthesizing, at any point via the escape menu. Like Genshin, you can create a higher tier item using three of the same type from the lower tier. So for example, you can create one glimmering core using three extinguished cores. However, there are no character passives that provide any benefits with synthesizing. The process for converting items is also a bit different when compared to Genshin. Weekly boss drops can no longer be converted. However, both monster drops and overworld boss drops can be converted at a ratio of two to one within the same tier. There's also no powder or any sort of conversion currency. It's just a flat two to one conversion. There's a lot of items and materials to keep track of in Star Rail, and it may be easy to feel overwhelmed, but fear not. Take it one step at a time, and hey, you could even come back to this video and watch any specific part that you want to freshen up on. But to keep things simple, especially for the majority of you who may have some Genshin experience, we've created this awesome graphic that outlines each of the different Genshin items related to Ascension and what their Star Rail equivalent is. It's also linked in the description below, so feel free to save it, share it, do whatever you need with it. We made it specifically for the community. Lastly, we want to give a thank you to these individuals. Their help was invaluable in getting all this information prepared. Like we said, we have a lot more guides in the docket, so if that's something you want to see, hit that sub button, and with that, we'll see you on the next one. See you then.